Yo, welcome to my channel. My name's JD and I am an artist from Bristol in the UK. And it is another sunny, glorious day here in Bristol. And we are back. We're here at Waverley Gardens again, ready to do my third mural. So, there's not much else to say. Let's just get in there and crack on. So, this is the wall in question. It's roughly four and a half to five meters by about two meters high. So quite a big one. It's in a little bit of a corridor, so I'm a little bit more restricted to space and obviously where I can put my camera to film it. But yeah, this is pretty much it. First thing I need to do is have a swig of my monster. No, I don't. Let's get prepping. Just gonna mask up all the top, all the bottom, prep the wall, ready to slap some paint on. Let's go. The first thing I'm doing is working out my horizontal lines. Now I need a measure as drawing a horizontal line all the way across this wall freehand is just almost impossible. So using a piece of tape to know how far down to come, I just mark the wall all the way along and I just join the dots and that's how I get my horizontal line. And to make sure I get my next horizontal line straight, I just rip a little bit off of the tape and just going down from the last horizontal line and just using this as my guide. And then at times I'm also just using my initiative and using this comb to get the bottom horizontal line so it's the same distance from the floor. With my horizontal lines done, I'm now ready for some paint. Now this is just an emulsion paint, the same sort of paint that you decorate your house with. And first of all, I'm just laying down a blue for the sky. In order to get the different shades of blue, I'm just mixing colours together. So, for instance, making the blue a bit darker, I'll add a little bit of red and a little bit of black, just to make it a little bit darker, and that's how I get my different tones. Now what I am doing here is I'm just putting a small amount of paint on the brush and the brush is slightly fanned out by pushing it down and I'm just brushing it against the wall to get some texture of the top of this water. Whew, God. My arm feels like it's going to drop off. So, background's mostly done, so now it's time to get my pencil and fill in some of the landscape at the top. This bit took a lifetime. These are supposed to be bubbles. If you imagine this water is pushed up against glass, this is just the edge of the glass. And I was trying to mimic bubbles and to work my way all the way along the five meter wall did take quite a while, I must say. So right now, as you've probably guessed, this is the bottom of the seabed. And I'm just adding some rocks. So the basics of the rocks are done. I'm just adding some white to the same grey to make a highlight 
and give these rocks some highlights and textures. By having a small amount of paint on the brush and dabbing it onto the wall, this is how I get my texture for the rocks. Right now I'm doing some of the sea plants and I have to say these were quite fun to do at the beginning. After about 30 of them I think it got a little bit tedious but you just got to persevere and crack on. It's actually day three today. Come back checking it out. Do you know what? I'm really quite happy with it. It's looking good. So let's crack on, but first thing, let's enjoy a lovely brew. For this piece, I typically add around three tones to most things. So for these rocks, for example, this would be the third tone that I'm adding to it. And remember, the more tones you add to an artwork, the more realistic and the more sort of depth and 3D it will look. Now it's time to start adding the sea creatures. All of these fish and sea creatures, I got them all from Google. There's absolutely no shame in finding references for your artworks. There's no way that you're ever gonna remember how to draw every animal in the world. So there's no harm in taking some references from Google and using this in your artwork and using lots of different references to put your artwork together to create one big cohesive piece. One thing that I forgot to add to this piece when designing was a crab. So just quickly finding one on the internet, using it as a reference, and getting a crab on the artwork had to be done. The goal for this mural is basically to just brighten the place up with some colours. So it's not necessarily the sea in the UK, as a lot of the fish are actually tropical, but the tropical fish have some really bright, vibrant colors. So this is why I chose it. And it's kind of just leaving it up to people's imagination. This could be anywhere you want it to, any landscape. The idea is just to get a nice, colorful, vibrant picture on the wall. putting some more tones into the dolphins and emulsion paint is not great at blending so as you can see I'm using my finger to push the paint around.
this is the part that gives the piece a finished JD signature look and that's the outlines. I use the outlines to separate everything and pull it out from the background. And for these outlines, I'm just using a Sharpie pen. This is not a how-to video. I'm not recommending this is what you should use for a mural. This is just how I done it. So I just wanted to let you guys know that. This is what worked for me. I came into a budget and of course I'm quite new to doing murals. I'm sure over time things will probably change and I'll start using different materials, different techniques. So I just wanted to make you guys aware of this. So I have saved the best bit for last. Now this is probably the most complex part of the whole piece. Now this is the ship. This ship is actually what the building is named after. It is actually the Waverley ship. So a little bit of history of the Waverley ship is actually the last seagoing passenger carrying paddle steamer in the world. The PS Waverley is named after Sir Walter Scott's first novel and she was built in 1946 to replace the PS Waverley that was previously built in 1899 and it served in the Second World War as a minesweeper but unfortunately it was sunk in 1940 while helping rescue evacuated troops from Dunkirk. The PS Waverley has now been restored to her 1947 appearance and now operates passenger excursions around the British coast. So it took quite a few days, but we are finished. I am so happy with how this piece came out. Everybody absolutely loves it. They say it almost feels like you're walking through underwater when you go past it, which is pretty cool. And the ship was really detailed. I was super happy with how that came out, although it did take me two days and early to do just the ship. Anyway, we are all finished. It'd be wicked if you guys let me know in the comments what you think about this piece. And if you liked it, it'd be sick if you could smash that thumbs up button, give it a like, and it'd be wicked if you could subscribe too. And as always, if you hit that little bell notification icon, you'll be the first person to know when my next video drops. So there's nothing really else to say. Let's show you the final piece.